they they always say, God, the whole public thinks you're like this really clever guy, like this really nice guy, and really they I can't even swear they're like really you're not clever and you're a bit of a. D- <laughs> this is the official Leeds United podcast. What about what about icebreakers rituals? Obviously, you've got to do your singing. Yeah. I want to know what your song was first and foremost. But if there are any others, any other rituals, any other did you did you come in bearing gifts and say hi guys? I'm here. I'm your new number nine. Please welcome me in. Please accept me. That kind of thing or anything. <laughs> no, it, was, it wasn't as bad as that. To be fair, there's. There's always the the dreaded singing when the first away trip. And you know what? I've been at so many clubs that I kind of like I'm immune to it now. (laughs) I just like, yeah, it's my turn. I'm going to get up. Don't worry. Um, But I've I've changed my song, actually. I started off when I first started doing it, doing Wonderwall because it's just easy. Everyone knew it. And then I changed to... It's a get out. That's a very easy song. Yeah, exactly. It's a get out. Because you get everyone joining in. Exactly. Once I got a little bit more comfortable, I went to Ain't No Man High Enough. That was my one. Amazing. Can you do a rendition yeah. of that now? For, I'm only no, do you know what? That. I knew you were going to ask me. Oh, no way. <laughs> we, we can this just is our first away trip. <laughs> yeah. I'm sat right your... here at home. Don't worry about me. <laughs> do you ever bring your instruments in? Because you're, you're, you're not just a violinist. You're also guitar, keys, you do the whole lot. The one-man band, Bamford. Yeah, no, I haven't. That? I haven't actually brought it into Leeds yet. They were saying that I needed to, but um, I remember Barry and Forsh, they were both trying to learn the guitar. So I was sending them stuff on WhatsApp, like trying to teach them a little bit over WhatsApp. But they have been, the kit men, especially Bees and Muzz, were saying to bring it in. So I will have to bring it in eventually, I think. Hang on, how did that go? Did they learn guitar when you were sending it over to them? Uh, to be honest, I don't know. I mean, they... They kind of put it on the back burner saying, I haven't had time yet, I haven't had time. I was like, yeah, <laughs> so what, leave it, don't worry about it. <laughs> there's, there's something that Bex and I discussed a, a while ago and I want to know if it's something they still do and yeah. if you've been through any. Uh, I didn't court retire case. that long ago. Court, no, we'll, 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 we'll find out, won't we? <laughs> court, court cases. <laughs> no. No, not at Leeds, no. No, we don't do anything no, we like don't, anymore. Do you know what? We don't do fines at Leeds. Um the manager doesn't, no he doesn't way. believe in it. He thinks that like, it's not the best way to get someone to do something. But so if you're late for training, know. what happens then? Uh, nothing, to be honest. You're just, you're, you're expected, if you're going to be late, you have to have a valid reason, obviously, to start with. Um, then as long as you apologise and make it clear that you're sorry that you were late, I think as long as it's not, you don't repeat it and it's not something that happens like a couple of times a week then it's just you're allowed a one-off. Is there anyone who's like notoriously late? Like I, I put my hands up, I'm late for everything. Is there anyone who's like always having I'm, to apologise? I'm never for? late. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. No. <laughs> um, do, do you know what? Jan, Jan Perveda, to be fair to him, at the start, he was, um start of this season, he was turning up late. Um, just I think because he, he lived in Manchester and he was struggling a little bit with the traffic and stuff. But the, the lads kind of just got their arm around him and said, look, you want to break into the team, you, you've got to change that. And to be fair, he listens. He's he's good. He's a good young lad. And he he started, believe it or not, he started coming in. There's times where you'd come in at 7.30 or the fitness staff would be in at 7.30 and Jan would be out on the pitch already, like doing stuff oh, on his own. Oh, so brilliant. God knows what time he leaves his house. But um yeah, he's he's turned it around and he's he's reliable now with that kind of stuff. There you go, Jermaine. There's hope for you yet. You <laughs> might turn up on time for the next podcast. <laughs> I mean, for for anyone unaware about court cases, um, when Bex was late for training, they uh, wasn't quite as nice as that, was it, mate? Uh, don't remember, Matty. Apparently, it was that long ago. So uh... <laughs> no, no, no. There were there were many many moments, many. Um... Oh, it, you've just you've you've done me here. You've done me here. <laughs> it's I, a good story. I put I put it all to one side. I've let it all go. You know, have you it's water under it, have the you? bridge. Yes, yes, I have. I've not <laughs> dealt with it. I've just shoved it right down there and just just popped it in a box and just, <laughs> <laughs> just Ch- let it manifest it in the sea. slowly but surely. <laughs> well, I'm well, I'm opening that box. <laughs> yeah. I'm opening it. You got put on trial, didn't you? I've I've been put on trial um, a couple of times. So when I was uh, quite early on, I'll, I'll tell a different story because um, it happened a, a few times. So <laughs> Never while, training, while we were training, <laughs> while, uh, while we were training at Leeds, you, you had a, a fine list 
and you, if, for example, you, you could either be, if you were late, it would be 20 quid fine. If you um, were wearing somebody else's flip-flops in the showers, it would be a 20 quid fine. If you got nutmegged in training, it's a fiver every time. Uh, if you miss a penalty in training, it's it's a fiver or a tenner or something like that. So there, there were loads and loads of different uh, different fines, different things that you could be fined for. Um, one of the guys said that they nutmegged me, and he had he obviously went to to one of his other pals and said, "Look, I'm going to throw Bex under the bus. We're taking him to court, and then we'll sting him there." So I'm thinking, I didn't know any of this, so I'm I'm minding my own business, just focusing. I've done my prehab. I'm in the gym working out ready to go to training. Um, and just before training starts, we've got like a, a 15 minute period, a 10 minute period before training where we go to kangaroo court. <laughs> so we're in court and it, it was, it was literally the, um, the old gymnasium, which is upstairs in, uh, yeah. above the physio department. Now I think it's, is that where all the coaches are? Yeah. No, the 23s were, they did use that as the gym, but I yeah. think it might be offices and that now. Yeah. Okay, so so that's that's where it was, and um, they said, right, Bex, you've been nutmegged, and I was like, what? When? By who? <laughs> no, I haven't. They say, okay, cool. Do you contest it? I was like, absolutely. And then I looked around, and everybody behind me is going, yes, jumping up and down, celebrating, because they knew they had a they had backup, and I had nobody to defend my side of things. So I'm defending myself, and they're all prosecuting me. So rather than me just accepting a five pound fine. I think it ended up being uh, 20 quid fine and I had to go out onto the training field, um, pull my shorts down, show my bottom and they had to, every member of the squad had to have a shot. Hit, <laughs> oh hit me on no! My, my, my bare cheeks. <laughs> was, it, was it cold out? It was, uh, it was January. Because that oh, will really it? hurt. Late January. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. Jermaine. It, it, it was a stinger, I'm not going to lie to you. Oh. <laughs> Our times have changed there. Eh? Yeah. So from then onwards, from, from then onwards, I always said to, like, I always had um, a great relationship with Luciano Becchio or Brad Johnson or Johnny Housen. Or, or, I always made sure I had somebody in my corner before court started. So court was every Friday. Yeah. I always made sure on the Thursday night and the Friday morning, I'm coming in and I'm saying, hey, what's up, boys? How are we? Hey, do me a favour. You get my back, I got your back. You know, <laughs> just in case. Just in case. Hey, nothing's going to happen, but just in case. <laughs> but then it, it got to a point, it got to a point where we all started stitching each other up. Yeah, and people but are lying. It, it all that. added to the banner. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Just barefaced lying, you know, but... Yeah, that that was um that was one of many many moments that that really filled me with joy. Yeah, Patrick, cheers for do you that, think mate. you would have liked it, to have uh, taken part in that? <laughs> nah, I'm gonna be honest. No, we had... <laughs> you know, when I was at Burnley, they had a thing called like the spinners or something, and so if similar to what Jermaine was saying, that if you got a fine, you'd have to spin the wheel, and like on the wheel was like you've got to throw dartboards and whatever you get he finds a hundred pounds, but you can take it off whatever you hit on the dartboard. And for some reason, I always landed on dress up as Elvis and sing. So you can imagine how many times I've had to sing in front of the squad. And they bring out like an Elvis costume and I have to sing an Elvis song. Oh, honestly, can we please get the producers to provide an Elvis costume, please, for Patrick? <laughs> I want to see that. Uh, honestly, proper stitched up. Yeah, Amazing. You we had that you wheel, wheel, wheel of misfortune. We had it. That's yeah, what it was called. The wheel of it. misfortune. <laughs> well, it's providing good content now. So, cheers, guys. Thanks for your suffering. <laughs> um, I guess. I guess. Back to football. <laughs> back to on the pitch. <laughs> um, this is much more I mean, enjoyable. I was going to say, I'm really enjoying this chat. <laughs> um, how how has it changed? How is it different for you, Patrick, going from championship level to Premier League level? I feel like we can't just, I can't get the image of you as Elvis out of my head now when I'm talking to you. <laughs> I can see it as well. I, I know. I, I, had a, I had a wig and everything, like a jet that wig, uh, like this white power suit. <laughs> Oh my word! Oh, it's I'm like sorry, mate. Fled, we, that's fled trousers and all that. Ooh, You've done yourself oh, now because next time you're on. <laughs> yeah, it's happening. <laughs> I might just dress up in an Elvis suit to start with. Yeah. 
Uh, I don't even know what you asked me there. Um, <laughs> only both, Patrick. <laughs> you and me both. That would work. Um, what, is it, what is it like, that step up from the Championship to the Premier League as a player? What's the difference for you? Um, I think that sometimes in the Championship, well, for me anyway, I could find myself like in a game and there'd be like 10 minutes here or there where I look at the clock and 10 minutes has just passed. You're like, flipping it, what happened there? But... In the Premier League, you have to literally always be mentally in tune with the game because things, it's basically, it's not just challenging physically and technically against better players and better teams. I feel like mentally, you're a lot more worn out as well because your concentration in the Prem has to be a lot more. So I think that side of it is probably, for me, the the biggest step up. Um, And the fact that you're playing against players that cost £80 million. (laughs) (laughs) Does that overawe you at all, or does that actually spur you on? When you you know when you're seeing players coming on worth that much off the bench, is you just like right, bring them on, let's see? Yeah, to to be honest, I actually was looking forward to playing against like the big hitters, if you like. So when playing against Liverpool first game, I was looking forward to playing against Van Dijk, to see what it was like. And I've got one of my mates who's a, he calls himself a Liverpool fan, but he's from Nottingham. I don't know how he worked it out, but um, <laughs> he was giving me stick saying that. Uh, Van Dyke was going to eat me up and all this and that. And then when I scored, obviously, it was nice to just rub it in his face a little bit. <laughs> Most people's dream, I mean, young young lads at least, the idea of being a Premier League footballer is like, that is the dream. God, if I could do that, that would be amazing. I'd give everything to be a Premier League footballer. You weren't good enough though. Not a wizard. <laughs> You're serious, yeah. me. I'd be a <laughs> um, but you've done that. And... But that's not just your only skill, though, is it? Because you're a bit of a renaissance man, aren't you? Like, you, you turned down a, a scholarship. Oh, you uh, turned about Harvard. You? Yeah, ha- yeah, there you go, just drop that in. Drop yeah, just a, a, name a, turn, that. turn down a scholarship at Harvard, if anyone's unaware. It's quite a, quite a good university. Um, and you also, we mentioned all your, your musical talents and all the rest of it. You're clearly incredibly intelligent. It's like most people would be happy to do just one thing. But no, you can just do... Everything. So when I look at Premier League footballers, I go, it's fine, because that's all they can do. Yeah, all right, they're great, and they pay loads of money, but that's all they can do. But no, you've just got, you've just stolen talents from everyone, haven't you? No, not do left, you know what? Not if left you... anything for anyone else. <laughs> if you ask my mates, though, like, even though the whole Harvard thing, they, they always say, God, the whole public thinks you're like this really clever guy, like this really nice guy, and really they, I can't even swear, they're like, really, you're not clever and you're a bit of a d- <laughs> they, they, they bring me back down to earth so i think that i'm not i'm not too displeased yeah. with the public image of me at the minute because they think i'm like some brainiac who plays football but but when you when you turned that down and you went i'm going to be a professional footballer did yeah. you think i'm going to be not just a professional footballer but i'm going to be one of the best strikers in the country playing in the premier league i mean that's incredible no, i'm going to be honest no i mean it for me the university was never no matter which university, it was never something I really wanted to pursue. It was always football. So I always was pushing for football, but I had dreams obviously of playing in the Premier League and hopefully one day representing my country. But I think every every football player and every kid dreams of that. So for it to be within touch and distance, it's like, yeah, I guess sometimes do really have to pinch yourself. This is the official Leeds United podcast. 